August 9th, 2022, regular meeting of the City of Troy Planning Commission. Copies of the agenda for tonight's meeting are available to the entrance to the room. Agendas and minutes of prior meetings are available on the city website. The meeting will be conducted in accordance with the agenda as presented or amended by the Planning Commission. State law establishes planning commissions. This planning commission is comprised of nine residents appointed to serve our community. Members are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by city council. Other individuals participating in the meeting include representatives of the city's planning department, the city's attorney's office, and the city planning consultant Carlisle Wartman Associates. If you wish to address the planning commission at the appropriate time, please come forward to the lectern when recognized and clearly print your name and address on a sign-in sheet. Please begin your remarks by stating your name for the benefit of the commissioners. All remarks should be addressed to the Planning Commission, not to anyone else in the room. If you have a cell phone or any other device that might disrupt the meeting, please either switch it to the silent mode or just turn it off. At this time, I'll ask the Planning Commission Recording Secretary, Kathy Zarnecki, to conduct the roll call. Mr. Bigner? Here. Mr. Faison? Here. Mr. Hudson? Here. Mr. Print? Here. Mr. Lambert? Here. Ms. Malala Holly? Here. Ms. Paracas? Here. Mr. Ryman? Here. Mr. Tagle? Here. One present, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, next is on the agenda is approval of tonight's agenda is, uh, do we need to, Mr. Carlisle, I know you need to make a report later on on the census update for the master plan. Do you want to include that as part of the agenda or is that just be, be part of your comments? That, that can just be part of my comments. Okay, yeah. all right. Then is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Mr. Krent moves, is there a second? Mr. Um, Raman seconds it. Uh, ready for the roll call. Mr. Faison? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Ms. Malala Holly? Yes. Ms. Parakis? Yes. Mr. Raman? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Mr. Bigner? Yes. Bigner much. Motion carries. Okay, next is the uh, approval of minutes from the July 26th meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Mr. Beekman makes a motion to approve. Is there a second? Mr. Faison seconds it. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? Any corrections? Seeing none, we're ready for the roll call. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Ms. Malala Holly? Yes. Ms. Paracas? Abstain. Ms. Mr. Rumman? Yes. Mr. Tagle? Yes. Mr. Beekner? Yes. Mr. Faison? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is public comment for items not on the agenda tonight. Is there anyone that would like to address the Planning Commission for an item that's not on the agenda? Seeing no one approaching the lectern, we'll then move on to the uh, plan unit development proposal. This is a public hearing for a plan unit development file number PUD 2020-0018, a proposed concept development plan for Long Lake and Crooks master plan development, which is at the northwest corner of Long Lake and Crooks, section eight, currently zoned O for office. And I assume Mr. Carlisle will be doing the presentation. Yes, thank you. Can you put it up? Good evening. Um, before you tonight is a uh, proposed concept plan for a plan new development uh, located at Crooks and Long Lake. Um, this is a public hearing, Mr. Chairman, just to just to reiterate that to the to the commission. Um, so a plan unit development uh, application was submitted for the city to review for a mixed use development at the northwest corner of Long Lake and Crooks. Uh, the Planning Commission has considered a draft concept plan uh, twice before, but this is the first time it's a formal submittal uh, with a public hearing. Uh, this 24 acre site is currently vacant. It does have some significant tree cover as so well as the wetlands. Uh, again, the applicant is seeking PUD or concept PUD approval tonight. So just to um, educate the public and kind of uh, re-education for the Planning Commission, the PUD, pro PUD process approval in the city is a three-step process. And right now, we're at step one, and that's concept plan. What a concept plan uh, approval does is it considers a concept plan, 
And if the concept plan is approved, it rezones the property to PUD. The concept plan is like the name uh, constitutes, it's a concept. It is not as detailed as required as part of the preliminary development plan. Um, with the concept plan, a PUD, PUD agreement is also included in that, and that's what codifies um, what the requirements are of the concept plan moving forward to the next two steps in the process. Again, the Planning Commission is asked to hold a public hearing. You are the recommending body on this application, um, and ultimately the concept plan would be considered by the City Council based on your recommendation. Um, if this does move forward and they do get a recommendation of approval from the city, a recommendation of approval from the Planning Commission and an approval from the Council, they move on to step two, which is the preliminary development plan process. Um, what this is is very similar to your, your preliminary site plan. You have the concept plan approved, they submit a preliminary development plan, um, and we review that to ensure that one, all the requirements are met um, as part of that submittal, but also is it consistent with the approved concept plan. Based upon that determination, the Planning Commission then makes a again, a recommendation, and then that step goes to City Council for approval. Um, the applicant is able to do step two of the preliminary development plan in phases, so they can submit part of the development moving forward, but again, we review that against the concept plan um, that was approved prior to that. And the third step, if they've gotten through first, the first two steps, is they go on to the third step, which is the final development plan approval. Again, this is very similar to our final site plan process. Um, and again, we review the final site plan, or final development to, sh to ensure it's consistent with the preliminary site plan, and that again is only approved by city staff. It does not require review and approval by the Planning Commission or the City Council. So that's a three-step process as part of a PUD. Right now, we're in the, uh, step one, which is a review of the concept plan. So the intent of a PUD, and we've got much longer language in the zoning ordinance and much more detailed, but essentially is the, the process is to give relief to zoning requirements and promote flexibility to allow for a or more creative design, layout, and uses that wouldn't be permitted through conventional zoning or the underlying zoning of the property. Um, there, are, there are a lot of intent statements, but the, the, you know, the important ones to remember is um, the development should be a long-term contribution to the social, environmental, and economic susta uh, sustainability in the city of Troy. The development should respond to the changing public and private needs. Uh, the PUD process, again, encourages flexibility in design and use that will result in a higher quality of development. The development shall provide for long-term pro pro uh, protection and preservation of natural resources, natural features, historic and cultural resources. The development shall uh, efficiently use and conserve energy. Uh, the, develop the PUD encourages the use, redevelopment, and improvement of existing sites. A uh, PUD provides for enhanced housing, employment, recreation, and shopping opportunities in the city of Troy. And lastly, it ensures that the development is consistent with the intent of the master plan. Many of these PUD intents are actually baked into the standards, which I'll talk about here in a second. So this is the concept plan that is uh, considered for review by the Planning Commission tonight. Um, this is the, like I said, the third time the Planning Commission has considered it. It's evolved sort of from the very beginning. Um, the second one, this, this, this one is pretty consistent with the one you saw before, but I'll just kind of quickly note some of, the, some of the highlights of it. So the first um, is a proposed office complex in two buildings. Um, let me grab my notes quickly. Um, this again is located in the center of the site. Um, with, with the application, the applicant did submit some what I call development parameters, which kind of talk about maximum and minimums of each phase or each uh, individual building. Uh, for this, the applicant is proposing that the minimum height would be 60 feet and the maximum height would be up to 150 feet. And flexibility would be up to the applicant to determine what they would submit in the future if this is approved. The second um, concept would be a, a parking deck uh, in structure. Again, the parking deck could be up to 150 feet in height, 10 stories, um, and that would be accompanied uh, in time with the office development that needs that, sufficient, that amount of parking as a deck. The third component is a residential apartment component. Um, the height of that would be a proposed minimum of 40 feet and a maximum of 90 feet. So it would be, uh, in theory, less tall or shorter than the office buildings potentially on site, but it would still be allowed for up to 90 feet in height. The fourth element would be a hotel slash residential building. Um, the final use of that would, would, is not determined, but it would be, would be flexible between those two different uses. And the applicant proposes a um, minimum of three stories in height and up to a maximum of 100 feet in height. And lastly, in terms of built, built development, would be two residential slash retail buildings located uh, along, along Lake. Um, there's no parameters in terms of what the heights would be. Uh, they suggest that it would be at least 
one story tall, obviously, uh, but could be taller than that. In addition, the applicant's proposing wetland preservation at, at the hard corner there. Um, that's based on a review by the state uh, that's requiring that preservation. And lastly, as discussed with the Planning Commission last time, they provided some areas of site amenities. These include outdoor activity areas, pedestrian amenities, and what, what I'm deeming as uh, outdoor program space. So that's the concept plan the Planning Commission has asked to discuss tonight. As I noted, um, the applicant has proposed uh, what, I, what I would deem as parameters under which each of these could be built, and I, I spoke to those earlier, but they just kind of outline what the maximum square footage would be and what the minimum and maximum heights would be. So again, uh, the maximum heights of the office buildings could be up to 150 uh, feet in height, and the maximum area of the residential would be 90 feet, and the maximum area of the uh, retail areas would be 35 feet in height. So these are the maximum they propose, and they also have associated minimums with them as well. With regards to phases, um, the applicant seeks flexibility to build any development area in any sequence with the restriction that the hotel and residential and retail pads could be built as part of any phase. So they could be part of the first phase, they could be part of the fourth phase. However, they couldn't be the sole first part of the phase of development. So they'd be associated with another building on site, but they could be part of any phase. Um, the applicant is seeking flexibility with uses as well. They've kind of programmed office, residential, uh, hotel uses, but they want flexibility in the uses as well. So they're seeking all uses, both permitted and special, in the underlying OM, O, and GB general district, uh, general business district. Um, we note that we did a full review of those uses in those districts and find that there are some that the planning commission uh, should consider if they're appropriate for this particular use. Because again, if the concept plan gets approved with these uses allowed, they could come in for any use under, under which it would be allowed on these uh, zoning uh, districts. So the uses, and there, I have a longer list in my, in my report, but these are just some that I think that should have some discussion. Um, so if, if approved, they could do a school, a bus transit dispatching center, a hospital, drive through retail, large format shopping center, building lumber supply, outdoor com commercial recreation, adult use business would be allowed, prototype or experimental product design, et cetera. So I go down a laundry list of, of uses. I don't think that's the intent of what the applicant wants to do here, but that being said, they would be allowed if the concept plan is approved as the uh, PUD ordinance is written. The applicant has noted a number of benefits with their application. This includes horizontal mixed-use development that is consistent with the master plan, development of an under, underdeveloped and un, a prominent site, outdoor plazas, outdoor dining areas, uh, pedestrian circulation paths and activities, as well as public art. Again, the planning commission should consider these, these benefits as they review the, the application. There are um, 18 standards listed in the zoning ordinance under section 11.03. I didn't list all of them, but the ones I wanted to highlight as part of the discussion was the planning commission considered the com uh, compatibility of the development against the master plan, the proposed recognizable material and public benefit, the consistency with the surrounding uses, the long-term pre protection and preservation of natural resources, natural features, historic and cultural resources, uh, will the, the PUD reasonably mitigate impacts to the transportation system and enhance non-motorized facilities? Does the applicant provide innovative and creative site and building design solutions and materials? And lastly, uh, are, uh, has the application uh, in, incorporated design features and, tec and techniques such as green building and low impact design will promote uh, energy conservation and sustainable development? So in summary, Mr. Chairman, we are asking the Planning Commission to hold a public hearing, consider public comments, and as part of that uh, deliberations, we ask the uh, Planning Commission to consider the four following um, questions. One, um, is the proposed development guidelines, height, setback, um, billable area, et cetera, is that appropriate? Two, um, are the proposed and allowable use, special uses on the site appropriate? Have the, have the PUD standards been met? And lastly, um, are the proposed benefits as outlined by the applicant, are they commensurate with the requested relief slash development flexibility? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Carlisle, any of the commissioners have questions for Mr. Carlisle or any city staff on this? Yes, Ms. Malalahala. I just have a clarification. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Carlisle, uh, you mentioned that in the next stage, not the stage where, the, where we are talking about the concept, but the next stage, the, the builders have the flexibility to develop uh, the area as they, um, as they have identified. Um, is, is that the ultimate flexibility that they are given or is it something that we can say that we would like to see this particular thing built first so that we see how the whole entire area comes 
comes to be uh, and how, how it takes shape. I guess I'm lacking some good vocabulary words here. So um, as, as the applicant has, has alluded since the very beginning, they, they seek flexibility in terms of what gets built and what timing and what location on site. Um, this is in part due to market dynamics and you know, if one use comes in before another, they won't have the flexibility to be able to do that. What, if this is approved as is, it would lock them into this concept plan, but without any changes by the city council that recommendation of the planning commission, all the uses that would be allowed in those districts would be permitted. The heights as which designated would be permitted. And so what you would be, what you'd be allowed to do is when they come back for the second phase, which is the preliminary site plan, you could review it against site planning standards, but they would still have that allowability. You would have less impact in terms of, less input in terms of the uses, the height, et cetera, because it's already been approved as part of the concept plan. So this is, the, re this is the, the stage at which we have those discussions about what are the appropriate uses, what's the appropriate height and other bulk regulations, et cetera, um, to maybe rein that in if it's not appropriate for this particular area. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Mr. Krent. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on the, the Carlisle report under the master plan uh, subtitle. The last uh, line in that section uh, basically talked about uh, developing uh, the area as a pilot gateway. I think that's, that's really important to identify that area. And also you added uh, um, and add uh, wayfinding signage uh, not only in that particular development, but also as a kind of a standard for that entire North Troy area. I think it's just a, a great uh, line that's in enclosed in your report because uh, it, even though, you know, when you drive by that area, you feel, okay, this is a lot of offices and uh, business areas, but uh, with some kind of unifying um, signage and banners or something that, it, you know, makes makes that a destination spot for people to identify. I think that's a great comment that you put in your report. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Sabina. There's a, there's a lot of people, believe it or not, who, who um, watch online or wa watch these meetings. I know City Council uh, tries to get a flavor of, of the application and, and often watches the meeting. And I just want to point something out. I saw the applicant notice this as well. There was, um, there was a modification made to the concept development plan just before the packet went out. Uh, in the table, it shows the maximum square footage as 105, and that number was corrected in the memo, was corrected in the concept development plan. It's actually 350,000. But for those watching on TV, so it's it's first row, development area one, max square footage, that was increased to 350. So just if anyone's watching at home and they, um, you know, just wanted to, 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 just to clarify that, that, that there was, I think this was put together before the, 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 the um, <coughs> The correction was made, so now you know. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any other questions for Mr. Carlisle? I just have a couple of questions, and it may not be just for Mr. Carlisle. It's, I know the city's been de dealing with these plan unit developments for over 15 years now, so the, uh, the detailed document we have for the development agreement, is this pretty much par for the course as far as previous uh, agreements or are there some uniqueness in this one compared to what you've dealt with in the past? It's a pretty standard agreement, Mr. Chairman. I mean, there are some unique aspects to it with respect to the phasing and the um, you know, development area and the amenity area going, going hand in hand. But in terms of the, some of the recitations of the standard language, it's pretty standard. Okay. From a, from a non-attorney perspective, this is, this is I think the second uh, PUD agreement that's contemplated this type of phasing. Um, I would say most planning unit developments, they know exactly what they want. They don't, they're not interested in phasing, so they bundle together the concept and the detailed site plan into one step. But this applicant seeks flexibility, so um, it's a little bit different approach. One question I had too in that document on page four, it talks about development area one is residential uses permitted as of right or requiring special approval. It calls it an urban residential district. Can you define what's meant by an urban residential district? So that's the um, that's the that's the um, highest density 
uh, really residential like district in, in, the, okay. in, the, in the city. So they would be allowed to do what's under that, that district. We reviewed that. We had a little bit less concern about that because it's, it's in line with, with what we would expect for an urban residential type of development. Um, the uses where we had a lot of questions though were those GBOM and office type uses just because it was very broad and probably had a lot of uses that are not compatible with that particular area. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Beekner. Um, there's always questions about trees and wetlands. Was, was PUD different? How, how does that affect us? So the, the applicant, um, the applicant, there, there are some wetlands on site and there are some wetlands that are regulated by the state. Uh, and the applicant actually had um, revised their a previous application to this one to preserve those wetlands that are regulated by the state. So all regulated state wetlands are actually preserved on this site. With regards to tree survey, we did not receive a, tr a detailed tree survey at this point. We did? We did? Yeah. Okay. Um, we, we did apparently receive a detailed tree survey. Um, but, but what we would do is we were through each phase, because what actually is shown here is may not actually be where, what's built and what's where, that at the, if they move the second step, the, the, the detail or the preliminary site plan would include the tree mitigation for each phase, and that's when we would review, the, review it versus the, the, mit the mitigation requirements of the zoning ordinance, and they would have to replace on site or, um, or, or reduce the tree impact for each individual development. So we didn't get to the level of detail reviewing the, the detailed tree survey at this point, just because it's premature based on what the flexibility the applicant seeks as part of this uh, application. Yeah, and sometimes we speak this, a different language. So Ben's right in that we didn't receive a detailed tree survey that we're typically used to seeing with the mathematical calculations in terms of what's removed, what's replaced, et cetera. So Ben was right. So, but we did receive um, um, a counting and, a, and a, an identification of the, of the types of trees that are on the site. And um, so this site has a little bit of history. It was Farmer's Field. You can go on aerial photography. It was Farmer's Field, and then it went, it was left alone. So it, um, it was taken over by a lot of trees, a lot of invasive species. Um, this is not natural old growth white pine forest. Um, this is, there's a lot of poor, what we consider poor quality trees on this site. Just a significant proportion of the trees on the site are what we would consider low quality. Although there's value in, you know, in, in woodlots like that, but still, um, that information is in the packet for you to look at. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Faison. Just a question on this, when I look at this, and I know that uh, this is at the, I guess, the concept phase, right? So this is not necessarily what's going to be built in terms of the buildings and the uses, but I was wondering about the, the green space. Is, is that going to be the green space for the PUD regardless of, of what's built, or can that change as well? Because I know we spent a lot of time talking about the green space and making it inviting and active, so I was just curious about that. I, to honestly, Mr. Fass, unless the applicant has something different that may codify it more in the PUD, I would say um, the location and some of the amenities of the green space would change based on future developments. Um, the only thing I think that is kind of well locked in is, is the preserved wetlands by the state. Other than that, I think there's some there's flexibility in terms of where where those um, you know where the amenities go, what's in the amenities, how large the amenities are. I mean, the applicant's committed that when each phase is built, they'll build the associated amenity with it, but in terms of the, the actually what's going to go exactly in that amenity and where it may be exactly located, I think is up to changes in the site plan process as part of phase two. Location and size, you said. I, I don't see anything locked in in the, the ordinance, the PD ordinance that was submitted in the concept plan that dictates square footage, size, exactly what's going to go in. And again, conceptual at this point, based on what the applicant's given us. Thank you. Ms. Malala Hawley. I then have a clarification to ask uh, if, so according to one of the standards of the PUD is to preserve open spaces, green spaces to, or provide for, an, for those kind of amenities to be enjoyed by the public. Now if, as you're saying, that might not be codified, are we to assume that in the future when the site plans do come to us for approval, the chances are there will be lesser of these wetlands preserved as opposed to what we see now or the acreage that I see on the slide will be exactly preserved <coughs> except what sits on it could be changed. 
Go ahead, Mr. So, so the wetlands are pretty much locked in because they're state regulated. What, so the question for Mr. Faison was, are the, just not putting words in your mouth, Mr. Faison, but basically, is this, is, is this an accurate reflection of, of open space? Um, the, the applicant is committed to have, like, like Mr. Carlisle said, to have corresponding amenities, outdoor amenities with each phase. But the exact shape, the exact size, is not, is not locked in stone. Now, there's gonna be a requirement. If, if this gets a recommendation this evening, if this ultimately gets approved as, as it is today, there's, when each phase is submitted for the, for the, for the next, for phase two, for the um, preliminary development plan phase, the planning commission is gonna make a consideration, make a determination that it's consistent with the concept. So it's gotta generally be consistent with the concept. Now, I'm just gonna, I'll just, Look at um, we'll just put, look at phase four as an example. So let's say um, this gets this concept's approved, and this hotel this hotel says, yeah, we, we want this site. We're going to build a hotel there. We want a restaurant that's connected to the front and the restaurant close to the road, and we don't we want a little bit different shape of hotel. So now the drive changes from here to here, and, and this this restaurant's no longer here. Maybe this open space gets shifted down here. I mean, these types of things are, are to be expected. It's still, if that happened, that would still be consistent with the approved concept, but it will be a little bit different. At that time, at that point during phase two, the Planning Commission and City Council would have an opportunity to determine if it's consistent with the approved concept. So these are, these, this is kind of in play depending on you know who they get as a as a as a potential developer and what they what they want specifically to develop there, et cetera. So it's it's not locked in stone, but it's got to be consistent with the approved concept. Okay, thank Mr. you, Mr. Beekner. Two questions. One is piggybacking off of that from a green space. I recall twenty percent green space. It's a good memory, but remember, Mr. Beekner, that uh, planned new development is, is negotiated. Every aspect of a PUD is negotiated, including open space. So theoretically, a developer could propose less than what's required under the zoning ordinance, or they could provide more than what's required under the zoning ordinance. Do we know the number for this? We do not, because all we have right now is a concept. My second question was residential. I, I don't, I can't tell what that is. Is there any more detail or just that little? At, at, that's, that's the detail at this point. We know that uh, they propose a multifamily attached residential of some type at that location. We know what the minimum and the maximum heights are and how many, the, the maximum square footage of 350,000 square feet. That's gonna be, but what we do know is if this is approved as is presented this evening, and they get a developer who's interested in that residential phase, they will come forward with a detailed site plan with all the, all the information that's, that we'd require for a preliminary site plan. That, that then the Planning Commission would look at the preliminary development plan and make a determination if it's consistent with the concept. Thank you. Good question. Yes, Mr. Hudson. Let's <clears throat> segue into my next thought with the uh, Phasing. If this is a concept and we approve it, let's direct our attention to uh, the eight and ten story buildings. We say, okay, next phase they come in and they want to put a ten story building in where concept said yes. Are we able to reduce that in the height at that point or is that something we've got to pay attention to in this concept plan? Well, I, I think the answer is, and Julie, feel free to jump in, we're, we want to pay attention in, to, the, to the maximum height in the concept plan. What's the maximum height that you can live with? Okay, you've answered my question. Any more questions for staff? Yes, Mr. Rahman. My question, I think I'll ask the same question to the, uh, the applicant also. The question is if, if you just, Mr. Carlisle, go to the slide where it shows the recreational space. One of the slides shows number seven. Three recreational spaces. Oh, no, it's, oh, it's, it's. Yeah. So, um, with respect to this arrangement, I'm just asking the question to city to see if that there is any restriction 
to move the office building, which is at the center, on the street and have all this recreational space, like the way, uh, uh, Mr. Savin, I sent you a picture, I don't know if it's the right time to show, uh, so that, it, uh, that we have a courtyard type style. I mean, my question to you uh, is, is, it, is there any limitation from city standpoint, from engineering standpoint, to move the building on the street? The, there, there, there's, no, there's no restriction, and that's what the, the PUD would allow that flexibility to put the buildings in the appro most appropriate and creative, you know, laid out space. Um, so that's part of the discussion that, that we're, that the planning commission should have with the applicant. Um, I think some of the chosen locations of the open space was to um, to be used by the by the by the adjacent use of that property. So, for example, they they have that that area around the wetland to use to, to look out in the wetland. They've got the area farther north to be next to the residential to be used by the resident by the people that live in that. that um, so they try to break up the open space to be used um, by the associated uses on the site. But in terms of layout, that's something obviously that, that we've had with the plan, with the applicant before, you've had with them in previous meetings, and, and again, could have that discussion again with the- No, with the I know that we had discussed this, but I'm still trying. There, no, so this is a, from a site planning perspective, other than the wetlands, this is a, this is a, this is a blank slate in terms of right, right. Okay. layout. Now, the architect will say, we did it this way, this way, and this way for these reasons, but in terms of other than, the only restriction really is potentially if there's some drainage issues on the site and, and the wetlands, other than that, the, the PUD allows buildings to be placed wherever they are placed in the building as long as ultimately city council approves it. Right. So the reason I'm saying is, uh, the first thing is that you make the recreational space more useful because it will be a larger space. We spoke about having events, we are having all kinds of stuff, right, in the, our first meeting. So now I am seeing that it's almost like the same thing that we have on the, on the uh, east north corner, big pitch parking lot and then buildings are far away, right? It's not like the big viewer where we see nice buildings and then parking on the back. So that's one thing that I want to see if uh, we can discuss. And the other thing is, can we reduce the parking spot? Because we have a parking structure uh, so that we can have at least more green space. So these are the two things that I, I, I like to see. I, of course, I would like to know from uh, uh, the uh, applicant, but uh, maybe. Before I, before I call on Mr. Savannah, so one thing we want to make sure that we're kind of using this time to ask questions of staff, but we'll have the opportunity to talk to the applicant and also when we come back to deliberate to kind of say, well, we like this or we don't like that. So, right. So, and the qu question is from engineering city standpoint, oh. is there any restriction? And that's why I'm done. I then I'm going to ask the same question. Okay, I don't think there yeah, are. There's, there's, no, there's no restriction because, again, everything's negotiable in a PUD. But I just wanted to say, Mr. Raman, um, Mr. Raman submitted a, an image. Um, and just what we do, what we've done for, with every, every planning commission chair for, since I've been here, is we meet before every meeting to, to um, talk about how we can have an effective meeting. And we talked about the fact that you and another planning commission uh, member submitted images. And um, before I put it up, Mr. Chairman, I was just gonna see if you wanted to wait until an appropriate time yeah. So yeah, to I, show I, the image. Wait, yeah, let's that's, wait until yeah, it, uh, okay, fine. thanks. Any more questions for Mr. Carlisle or city staff? Seeing none, we'll invite the uh, applicants to come up and uh, make a presentation and answer any questions the members of the commission might have. Good evening. Make sure you sign in too, so. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Antone with the Kajoyan Companies. It's nice to see you all again. Um, I'm not going to get into um, who we are again. I think uh, everyone here uh, remembers uh, what we've developed in Troy and, 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 and throughout Michigan. Um, happy to answer any of those questions. Um, with me tonight is uh, our architect, uh, Chris Beck, from uh, the world-renowned architectural firm of Gensler. Um, we have Tyler Tennant, who is our attorney at Dauda Man, who's been working closely with Julie on the PUD draft. Uh, Leslie Accardo uh, is our environmental expert uh, from PEA Engineering. Uh, and then for the first time, because um, this is sort of new information since the last time we met, uh, but we have met with a number of 
uh, very high quality residential developers and I'm happy to announce uh, and introduce to you uh, Randy Wertheimer. Raise your hand, Randy. Uh, Randy and his brother-in-law, Sid Forbes, uh, the owner of uh, Somerset Mall. Uh, we are, will be partnering with them on the residential component uh, and, and Randy will be able to answer many of your questions as it relates to what this project will look like. Um, it appears as though the residential aspect uh, will be our first phase and the amenities that go with that. <clears throat> um, uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, we are um, uh, excited to um, have uh, one of their developments uh, in this 24 acres. Um, very, very exciting stuff and I, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to make that announcement today. So we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, I also wanted to, to just put, touch base, thank you Brent for the clarification on the max square footage uh, that we caught and delivered to the city. The other thing that I think I should point out in, in what you saw today were, were those uses um, that, uh, that Ben put up. Um, the uses for this development are defined in our planned unit development agreement as to what you see on the plan. Those are the uses and those are only the uses. So the other things um, are not, cannot be um, a part of, of our plan on this 24 acres. What you see in terms of uses on this, um, on this master plan is what you will get. The configuration, as Brent said, that may all change you know, slightly as we go through the process. <clears throat> um, and we're, we're, we're really happy because as, we, as we've been you know, talking to um, a number of, of high quality residential developers, every single one of them wanted to be in the exact spot that, that we are putting them now. So we're, we're thankful for that. And in fact, the office folks that we are talking to now um, are all looking forward to, if they go here, to, to be in that spot with, with a parking deck. So I think we've got the general configuration correct based on the market and based on the, the, um, the, the, the folks that we've talked to. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that any of you have. Um, the entire team is, is here and ready. Uh, we took a lot of your comments to heart. We've tweaked the plans um, just to reiterate. The wetlands will not move. <clears throat> Those, uh, we are essentially disturbing 0.9 of one acre, um, I think as, as we've gone through this process with Eagle, uh, and Leslie can touch on that, but what you see with regard to the, the two main spots of wetlands, bottom right and top center, um, are, are essentially um, where those will be. And the amenity areas. There is a plan I wanted to point out in your packets um, called development areas and it really shows the different phases and the different amenities that will go with each phase. So I think that's a really helpful part of the of, of the packet um, that'll let you know okay when we build the residential uh, in spring of 2023 here are the amenities that are coming with it, and here are the areas that they'll be in. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I have one quick question, then I'll turn it over to the commission members. I, I know you included in our packet that you had reached out to nearby residents to get their input, and it didn't, didn't sound like you received a lot of feedback. Approximately how many mailings did you do to adjoining residents? Can you come up to the mic? That way we can all hear you. So, so roughly, and I'm, I'm taking this by memory, it was approximately 15, and that, that constitutes roughly the south, east, west, and north. Okay. There aren't that many developments that are in, in close proximity. So people living in those developments then? It was all businesses. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Yes, Mr. Faison. Just a question. You said the residential would be the first phase that would be built? That's, right? that's what it looks like now. So is it area one or area three? Because area three is residential as well, right? So it's, it would be area one. So uh, area three is, what we're, we're keeping as sort of the flexible part of the site. Um, as, as, as Randy and, and I talked, it, it could very well be phase two of the residential. 
Um, they are very confident, and I want him to speak, uh, you know, uh, as his own confidence, but they are very confident in uh, that this is going to be a tremendous product in area one, uh, but we would, we would morph to area three as phase two of the residential. And then just to follow up, air, so if it's area one, then the area one denoted amenities are built. Yes, sir. At the same time. At the same time. Right. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hudson. Mr. Antone, if I heard Mr. Carlo correctly, I think I did, he was indicating in the conceptual agreement there is a provision that uh, you can utilize a whole string of uses in these various phases, including, among others, automotive repair. But I thought I heard you just say everything displayed or talked about or contemplated in the concept plan we don't have to go through that list because they're already stated in this plan. That's correct, sir. So there won't be an automotive repair or a, a pet store or no, something sir. of that nature. Correct. Thank you. Yes. I can, Rama, yeah, yeah, I can. So you, you heard what I said, right? Well, my question to planning department that um, can we move the the center building on on the street? No, that's not our. That's not our proposal. We don't think that that's the right use for the site. We think that you talking about area three. Yeah. Area three could be a tall building, and to put that right on the street and not have any visibility for the restaurants that we believe would be critical to this overall development would not be in keeping with what we think is the right thing for the market. But then, uh, Mr. Savid, and maybe you can just show the picture at this point of time, if you don't mind. You know, so uh, I was thinking of courtyard types uh, idea where everything is uh, surrounding that green space, and then you know even the residents can hang out there when after office, you know, because a lot of the residents probably will be working in the same location, something like that. You know, so it, courtyard is not like always like concrete. Sorry, concrete courtyard. It can be green. And it doesn't have to be that there is no opening. It can be separate buildings. <clears throat> but I see that you have three different spaces for recreational purpose. If I look at uh, the wetland versus the upland version areas, I think if you don't have the parking lot, you, have, you can have a bigger building, larger foot, footprint you can have. Because I, I kind of eyeballed on these things. I feel like you, you had to restrict your building size because of the wetland if you do it in the center. So that's why I'm thinking that, you know, did you think through this thing? Because, uh, uh, you know, the, the parking lot is an eyesore. That's for the residents of that uh, area, you know, because they don't like to see the parking lot. Rather, you know, they can have maybe few parking lots, parking spots for the, I mean, you could nowadays we call it reserve parking, and the rest can park in the parking structure, which is definitely, you know, another solution. So that's basically the idea that was playing in my mind, that's why I requested. So what's your thinking about that? Or maybe the architect can talk about it, or talk, talk about it, you know, so. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. It's, it, is, it is not something that, that we would ever think would work in the market, in this market. The parking deck <clears throat> that's on the site is a good distance away from the amenities. And there's gonna be very few restaurant operators, in our opinion, who would want to have their patrons park all the way in the deck and then walk that distance to those restaurant uses. So, so you're talking about those two restaurants, right? Yeah. So you're emphasizing those two restaurants quite a bit compared to your residential and other areas. It seems to me like you know those areas, I don't see any restaurant. I don't know if there will be any other restaurant because the restaurants normally will be suitable when there's a restaurant district, right? Because like the way we have it on Big Beaver. There's two restaurants, just the independent restaurants, you're focusing more on the restaurants, and that is the only reason you don't want to have the building moved on the street, kind of, uh, I, I'm not sure. Well, we also don't think that it makes sense from, from an architectural standpoint or anything else. I mean, I, I, I respect your opinion no, on no, it, no, but it is, it, it, it's, it, that would be a developer's nightmare. Uh, they, there's just not enough interest in, in blocking the whole site from the street. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. Randy Wertheimer, CEO of Hunter Pasture. It's good to be here in front of you this evening. To answer your specific question, that zone three is a flexible zone. And what I mean by that is, as Tony mentioned, 
residential is going to get built first. Likely, the office is also going to get built. That flexible zone three will be built based on the determination, is the office most in demand, is residential highly successful, and that decision will be made. Residential on the corner of Long Lake and Crooks is a non-starter. So if you move that building to the road, you lose all flexibility because we would never, nor would any residential developer, build residential on a very busy thoroughfare that all of our units would have a lot of noise. The reason that the residential is going to go first and the reason it's located where it's located is because it's in the farthest point from the heavy thoroughfare of that corner. And so all flexibility would be lost if we would push that building to the road. Aside from the other important reasons. Now, totally th that's a good, good reason, because yeah. I just wanted to know the reason. Now, if we decide to go back to work, and then, because one of the discussions we, 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 we were thinking that there will be a big corporate office moving in, you know, that can happen also, right? So the, so that flexibility is still there. Because I would like to, oh, yes, for residential, maybe the center place is better. It is, yeah. But then if we want to make it an um, uh, office, then maybe it will be a good idea to have it. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, going to be the last phase, likely, of yeah. the PUD. There's going to be the residential, the amenity, the office, the restaurants, hopefully the hotel. And then that phase three, or that <laughs> zone three, will likely be the last built based on what else has been well received. You know, we're going to let the market determine what that third zone should be, but if, if it's pulled up to the road, residential is no longer an option. Okay, and I, I I'm, understand I'm, you. I'm biased, but I think residential is a great use for this area. I, I mean, you know, if you say that, then we can say that we always talk about the mixed use, yeah. right, where first level is more commercial and then residential at the top, and those are supposed to be on the street. So if you say that it's non-starter, I don't think there are like tons of examples in different cities that you will find that multi-story buildings, but then first story is more restaurants. So that, 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 that could be a new you know, selling point for you guys. So Tr Troy just had a beautiful building built, the Zen, and if you notice, that's quite a bit off the road. They've got commercial lining the road, r restaurants, as Tony's suggesting here, lining the road, and the residential is, you know, two, three hundred feet off the road, so those units are not up at night with loud noise and, mm. you know, the traffic that goes by. And Long Lake and Crooks is a pretty busy, you know, thoroughfare. Mr. Chairman, I have my second question, if I feel Let, Let's let somebody yeah, else, yeah, and yeah, I'll come yeah. back to you. Is there any more questions? Uh, Ms. Uh, Paracas. Um, okay. You know, it's interesting that you brought up Big Beaver and Crooks because um, there, a lot of it had to be retrofitted. There was parking lot, there were, there were a lot of buildings already there. They had to repurpose buildings, they had to retrofit things. Um, you guys have a unique part of Troy. You have 25 acres, nearly 25 acres of untouched land that's privately owned, okay? So with that, you have a huge opportunity, but you also have a very large responsibility. Right now, you're zoned for office, Okay, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. You're zoned for office, but you're here tonight because you don't want to put office buildings. You want to do something different and bigger and better. <clears throat> if you're about to clear 25 acres of green space, you have to bring something great to us and also to all of Troy residents. This is the third time now that you guys have been here. And I've pulled the, me the meeting minutes and I've gone through and pretty much nothing that we've said to you appears today. Um, the thing is, is we haven't even, my suggestions, we've given you pretty specific suggestions and they haven't even diminished your purpose, your buildings, your um, businesses, and we've actually dared you to do more. But I'm still not seeing how this development is any different from anything else that we have here in Troy. There's nothing unique about it. Um, you said yourself that this is a gateway into North Troy and that it's meant to be a destination. You've used a lot of the right buzzwords this last time around. Outdoor plazas to encourage interaction and engagement. Outdoor dining opportunities. Pedestrian boulevard. Pedestrian circulation paths and activity areas. But none of these things actually appear in your concept plan, at least in a meaningful way. 
You, you added um, bocce ball, which is great. I love the idea. But basically, it's in a parking lot outside of an office. You talk about a pedestrian boulevard, but it's literally big, thick, white paint marks dashing through a parking lot. The focus of this PUD, as far as I'm concerned, needs to be a pedestrian boulevard. The retail, the shops, the activities, the seating, the art, that is the destination. The people will come and people will want to come and live and work there. I'm encouraging you to bring us back a concept that's unique and that appeals to Troy residents who are already invested in the community. If you do something great, an international headquarters will come. But if they end up leaving like Kmart did, at least Troy residents will have something there. These are my recommendations. Phase one has to be a pedestrian boulevard along with the paths and all the natural features. The parking garage with retail on the first floor should be the anchor building in the center of the PUD. The pedestrian boulevard should run parallel to Long Lake with retail along Long Lake that fronts the pedestrian boulevard. Access to the pedestrian boulevard should not be on Long Lake, but accessed off Crooks and Corporate Drive. I want to show you some pictures now. I've asked um, Mr. Savadant to show some pictures. We'll start with the parking structures if you can. This is an example of a parking structure that can be attractive and allows for mixed use on the lower level. If you flip through a couple of the other parking structures, these should be familiar to you. This is in Ann Arbor. There's another one, I think, um, from East Lansing at MSU, if you like a different type of look. But it all shows examples, this is Detroit, all shows examples of retail on the first floor and how a parking garage can be an attractive building and can be a center of your PUD. Next, I want to show pictures of um, outdoor plazas to give you an example of what I'm talking about when I say pedestrian boulevard. This is the third time I brought it up. A pedestrian boulevard means an area where no cars are allowed to go. It is not a parking lot. This is an example, these are the examples of artwork in a pedestrian boulevard, which is fine. <laughs> these are great too, and you guys brought up the idea of art, so I love to see it. Um, you can keep going. This also is examples of different seating in a, in a pedestrian boulevard. It incorporates water features, more art. And then this is different types of unique seating arrangements that are inviting and attractive and bring people in. Here's another one. I had a layover in Chicago two weeks ago and I found myself in Rosemont, which is five minutes from O'Hare. So I'd like to show the next slide, which shows Rosemont. I was pleasantly surprised to find this really cool pedestrian zone. They chose to put turf in the center with the surrounding buildings. There's a couple different sh shots of it, which show this is it at night. That is not a street where cars can go. The entire thing is pedestrian. At, it, it, they can do outdoor concerts there, they can do movies, they can bring food trucks, they can play bocce ball, cornhole, chess, whatever you want there. And then the businesses that come will spill out with, their, with the dining. Um, so so these, are, th these are, I don't know if I have any other pictures, this is just another shot of that same area. This is what I'm talking about and this is what I want to see there. We can talk about the master plan too while we're at it because it's important because that's why we're here. We're, we're here to make sure that what you bring to us complies with our master plan. I'm gonna read right out of um, page 192 because it speaks specifically about this intersection. The vacant parcel on the northwest corner of Long Lake and Crooks offers an opportunity to establish a core for North Troy. This core will provide a compatible mix of uses and should be the starting place of other strategies in the plan, including pedestrian circulation, improvements, landscaping, wayfinding. At the heart of the core is the community gathering space. That is what your PUD lacks at this point. Number two, North Troy is fairly green. Many of the corporate site Sites offer attractive landscaping and even water features, but most of these facilities are designed for aesthetics, not for use. 
Creating a community gathering space in the vacant land and underutilized parking area will enhance North Troy's sense of place. It should combine landscaping, hardscape, include amenities such as cafe seating, movable chairs, bike racks, water features, permanent and seasonal shaded areas, public art and performance space. This combination of plaza and green space will provide a space for corporate programming and neighborhood recreation supporting the adjacent office service and residential uses. I can go on and on. The master plan goes on and on, basically describing what I'm showing you. Um, ben already did a nice job of going through the zoning ordinances, which what we're held to, to make sure that what you're doing complies. And it does not, your, your PUD just does not provide a sufficient number of the following objectives because it doesn't provide something for the Troy residents. I understand that you guys are really excited about residential, but it's three times now that you've come. It's largely unchanged, and there's no way that I'm going to recommend to city council for you to clear off 25 acres of green space to put in a bunch of buildings in a surface parking lot. I don't know how you don't see that. It's surface parking lot. There's no place that attracts people. People want to come. You talk about it being a destination. A destination is where people come and park or ride their bike or walk and have things to do in, 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 a, in a destination area. So I've provided those pictures. I hope they were helpful, but that's really what I'm looking for for the PUD. That was a lot to hear. Do you guys have some responses to what Commissioner Paraka said? I'd like to speak to the residential component of that. And if we can uh, pull up the slides that show the different zones. So we've been a residential developer for 23 years. And we've developed all over Southeast Michigan. My partner, Nate and I, Nate Forbes and I, take architecture, open space, recreation space very seriously and the developments we've done and other municipalities speak to that this is a PUD concept plan I welcome the challenge when we come before you for a true site plan for the residential component of the site to show you great architecture to show you great open space to show you many of the things you're asking for that's not what tonight's about this is a general PUD and to suggest that two out of the four front doors of the residential building don't provide that potential open space, how do you know that we're not providing an ice rink in the wintertime in one of those amenity areas that can draw people from all over Troy? That's not the detail that is at this level of the PUD. And we look forward to the opportunity to bring that forward to you. Because we take you know, very seriously the quality of anything we're going to put our name on. And we expect this to be a beautiful development with a lot of the things you're suggesting. And unless I'm interpreting you know, this stage of the PUD, that's not really what this is about. And I'll let Tony speak more specifically to the other uses, the parking deck, the office. You know, that is you know, their team and what, what they're going to design. But the residential and the open space component on each side of the residential is extremely important to us, will be part of the first phase of the development, will be something that brings people together, along with the different uses of the restaurants and everything else. But we're not putting that level of design in phase one of this process. Well, I think you misunderstood me then, because um, I don't, to me, it's, it's a fundamental part of the design is to have a, a pedestrian boulevard. So if we can't agree with it at, from a concept plan, it's a no-go. I mean, I... I Nobody's I, disagreeing. Okay, but, but how are we going to move forward from here w w with this plan? And you're telling me that maybe in a, maybe in a later rendition you're going you're gonna, to... I mean, I see you put the pickleball. I love all these ideas. But putting pickleballs for those residents, I want to know what's there for, for everybody else. I want to know what there, what's there for me and my high schoolers who want to walk over there and hang out at this destination, this gateway of Troy, this, this, this awesome thing. That's what I'm looking for, and that's not there. And it can't be there because it's, a, it's, it's two restaurants in a bunch of surface parking lot. I'm telling you that the concept, you need to rethink about the concept. Be bold, do something different. This is no different than any other place here in Troy. There's, it's, 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 it's another big beaver in, 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 in Crooks Road. What makes this different? What makes it different from the hotel and the office buildings and, and the retail on Crooks and Big Beaver up the street? 
there's something wrong with the rest yeah. of Troy? Because in my opinion, the rest of Troy is highly sought after, whether it's the schools, whether it's the retail, whether it's the residential, the office. I just named a lot of different yeah. uses that almost every city in Southeast Michigan would put their hand up and say, can we please be great at one of them? Troy's great at all of them. And so you want us to be the anti-Troy, but we're here because we love what Troy is, not what Troy isn't. And we, we may have a, a difference of opinion on, on a layout, but I can tell you, you're gonna have great architecture, you're gonna have great open space, and we would love to have people come to this site and utilize the different amenities we're gonna have in this open space. We're not gonna have signs up that say, if you're not a resident, please go away. That's but, absolutely not but the it, case. But it doesn't invite people when, it, this is not a uh, an open space for people. I'm not, I'm not talking about the community center design where there's gonna be an ice skating rink. That's not what I'm talking about. That's, that's, that's government, you know, or, you know, that's the city's land. This is private, I get it. I'm encouraging you to bring businesses in. I'm encouraging, you know, people to come and use the businesses. But it doesn't, it's not a destination when you can't bike and walk and park and stay a while. And, and, and I do want something unique. I mean, to tell me what's wrong with it, there's nothing wrong with it. I love Crooks and Big Beaver, it's great. It was retrofitted, it was a lot of work. You guys have a clean slate here. You have a clean slate to do anything you want. You haven't told me yet why you can't do what I'm asking you to do. What is wrong with the, with the, with the, with the boulevard idea, which Lovely. is so, you, and it's so unique. Nobody's saying it's wrong. Okay, so I'd you're, love you're, to you're, see you're you go. We think it's, okay, nobody, but I've, nobody I'm so glad you're wrong. saying that. I'm so glad you're saying okay. that. Please go back and bring us a picture you of it. You don't need to go back, this well, is conceptual. Yeah, Give us a right. chance to come forward with real detailed design plans. This is the time I, to do that. What I'd like to do now is, you know, we've had this yeah. back and forth and we may not have an agreement on what exactly is going on here, but I want to give the yeah. other commissioners the opportunity to ask questions or any other questions from the commission. Ms. Malalahala. So pretty much what uh, Commissioner Barak has said is what we were talking about in the previous meeting. I just wanted to, I just want to point out one thing. Residential was not part of your first concept plan. I'm glad you considered it because that was one of the ideas. January 2021, when the concept plan was provided, there was no residential part mentioned, and now there is. So now you see how you are responding to what we know Troy residents want and need. That um, my biggest quip about this whole thing is, although you have given those amenities, you've created the pickleball courts or the sculpture garden or the fire pit and the seating area, it still feels very industrial. It still feels like four rectangular Lego, Lego blocks sitting there and this huge parking space in the middle. There is too much surface parking, parking to the center, parking in the left, and a huge parking to the right. I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, as Commissioner Paraka said and as we have reiterated in the past two meetings, what is, what is going to be attractive about this place what is the wow feature that people are going to want to come and spend time and gather and sit around, especially with the COVID, we know outdoor spaces became such a big um, uh, need. And you have a golden opportunity here to do something unique, a promenade, a plaza, a square, surrounded by retail, parking, everything can be put together. This is four Lego blocks, one center parking area, and yes, one green patch here and a green patch there. It is, I expected and hoped today's plan will be a lot more different one because I thought we gave a lot of ideas last time. And that one center pathway that goes all the way from the hotel to the residential, I, I don't know how much of a connectivity you're talking about here. And where is the, there is no cut from Long Lake towards the sculpture garden, so pretty much people are gonna go into the parking lot, park there, and then go to the sculpture garden. What is gonna make them stay? They're gonna come, they're gonna eat, they're gonna shop, they're gonna go. What, is going to, what are you going to make there that's gonna make people stay, engage, congregate, group together, have some social engagement sessions, quality time with each other, and enjoy the, the, the beautiful space that you guys have created for all the residents of Troy, including the surrounding cities. This plan is very 
gray and white for me. The, the plan looks like that because there is no architectural detail. 25% of this space, 25% of the site is open space. I don't know, of, is there any other development in Troy that's over 20 acres where 25% of the site is open green space? I, I don't know of any off the top of my head. It may exist, but I can't think of one. So the, the judgment of the way this looks with no architectural plans I think is a bit unfair. And so this looks industrial. There's no landscape architecture. There's no plans for a building. There's no specific architectural plans for the restaurant. I mean, there's no, the plazas aren't designed. Maybe I'm misinterpreting this stage, and, and Tony, I haven't been part of these past meetings, but when you talk about conceptual, until you get a conceptual approval, developers typically don't spend hundreds of thousands <laughs> of dollars on architecture and on landscape architecture. And so the landscape architecture and design of this site is critically important. The architecture itself of each individual use is critically important. But I'm not sure that anybody spends a tremendous amount of money doing everything you're asking us to do without at least having some consensus of here's generally the uses and the sizes that are allowed. Because we could go and spend all this money and come forward with a seven story building and I just spent all this money and you said you're not allowing more than five stories. Well, I'd like to know that in advance before we spend all the money. And that's generally how most municipalities do this. We're not suggesting that what's on the screen today is some beautiful architectural plan that has amazing landscape. It doesn't. But conceptually speaking, are the sizes appropriate? Are the heights appropriate? Are the uses appropriate? And if we get consensus on that, then we can come forward with a specific site plan, and then you truly get a bite at the apple to tell us you love this, you'd like to see this different. Because now we're spending real time and energy to develop plans and to do something that makes a lot of sense for the city of Troy, for the surrounding neighborhoods, for all these different uses. Mr. Tegel. I think you have an opportunity to sell your concept to us. That drawing didn't do it. It's, we're not talking about what your architecture looks like or what your landscape plans look like, but we're talking about selling us ideas, concepts, and it just hasn't happened. I mean, you know, unfortunately, uh, you chose to use graphics like a, some rectangular buildings and a square parking lot or a parking deck, yada, yada, yada. I would, in, in hindsight, I would say that was a big mistake, okay, because you, you haven't sold us the cream of the crop. When I go into a client and I want to sell them a concept, it's about words, it's about ideas, it's about things that will get him or her excited. You obviously heard there are folks on this board that are not excited. So we're looking for something to get us excited. Certainly. There are the nuts and bolts. Well, can we go but five stories or seven stories? Yeah, that can be all part of the concept, but you haven't used the exciting words, the descriptors, the things that we've talked about in past meetings. And I think that's critical to getting us excited about your project. Um, I guess the other thing before I have one, one other comment uh, about area number one. Tell us about your product that you're thinking to go in area number one. We plan to develop a five to seven story luxury residential building, highly amenitized, uh, likely a rooftop pool, 3,000 square foot state of the art workout facility, 2,000 square foot or industrious or we work type work from home space for our residents, a lobby like you live at the Four Seasons of the Ritz Carlton, uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. concierge, state of the art technology, Amazon delivery rooms. Uh, the best of the best in terms of uh, the residential. And it's very consistent with what Nate and I are currently doing in Birmingham, West Bloomfield, Northville, Corktown, and Ann Arbor. That description, extrapolate that description over this project. Because what you just described sounds pretty exciting to me. Sure does. But extrapolate that over this project, and I think you will get more support in the end. All right, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, again, we are trying to deal with a concept plan and we would have hoped that you would have seen us as 
the premier office developer in Michigan and seeing the things that we've developed, like the Flagstar headquarters, like Liberty Center, the Troy Marriott, PNC Tower, um, so many others all throughout the state. And again, we're sorry that we showed block images, but these are just meant to be, and we've said this so many times, just meant to be the areas of these uses. Um, you know, could we have shown the various uh, details of the parking deck and the, the images? Yes, we could have, but you're gonna get that bite. You're missing the point. Yeah. You're still missing the point. You have a premier architectural, worldwide architectural firm. I, I'll guarantee you they didn't come up with that. And I'm not just talking about the planning, but I'm talking about the presentation, the graphics, getting the concept out there in a way that it's exciting to people. They just didn't do it. Okay, any other questions? Yes, okay. Mr. Krent. I, uh, I kind of echo what has been said already, and I won't go reiterating any of that, but uh, back in the day when the Kmart Center was gonna be the pavilions, they had uh, nice graphic renderings of a huge center area. In other words, let's say that what you have is a parking lot. They showed a, a horseshoe-shaped uh, gathering place. They did, sh and this is preliminary. This was, a, you know, it's a PUD. Um, it had fountains. It had a skating rink. It, had, it showed the retail and all kind of activities going on. That was a center focus of their whole concept. The buildings, they had residential behind, they had you know, some office, some uh, retail on the first floor surrounding that horseshoe shape. It was exciting to look at. Um, I've seen other real examples. I was on a, uh, one of the planning commission, uh, the national conferences down in Atlanta, and I visited a town called Smyrna, and they did a fabulous job of creating a gathering place for residents. Uh, I've got photos of it. I'm sure you, you, know, you can Google them. If you'd like, I can certainly forward them to you. But that, that parking lot is a center focus. It's not a gateway. That's what was what then put right in the um, master plan thing. This should be a pilot gateway to the North Troy area. And what's a gateway is a bunch of asphalt. It's not right. It's, it should be that exciting thing that like the pavilions had. That's what we'd love to see, even in the concept level. So that's all I had to say. I appreciate that. It is, it is meant to highlight five different amenity areas. It is meant to highlight pedestrian connections. That's what those, um, those connections are, are meant to be, is that they're, they are all meant to be connected ultimately when, when they're, you know, when they're developed as phases. Um, but, you know, I guess, I guess um, I, you know, I, I hear you. I, I just, we, we were taking the concept phase differently than what you're all saying today. We, we were taking it as more of uses and then we come back with the, the strong details of each individual phase where you know you would you would have the the uh, the latitude to say we hate it we love it you know all that sort of stuff um so mr rama yeah, i uh with respect to parking uh parking area the the surface parking do you know what percentage of area is surface parking is surface parking it's a very small percentage less than two acres, less than two acres of the 25. Gotta come back up. So I, I like to know the exact area, uh, if, if possible. If not, then that's fine too. Less because I'm, well, next time when you come back, I'm going to ask the same question. I want to see if you reduced it or not. Because it seems like you are not listening to us what we say. So it has to be some kind of quantitative. Because I like to see few um, more green space, and then for that, if we just have to, uh, if we have to have more layers on the on the parking structure, that, that, that's doable, right? I mean, because if it's a PUD, we can, we can always you know, approve that. And then we also like to know why we need that many surface parking. Maybe we just don't need it. Right. So I, I, can't, I can't give you the specific number of the area just offhand. I could easily mm -hmm. measure it, but I just don't know that offhand. Roughly, it is less than two acres. I do know that, but I can give you that specific. Out of, uh, 20, out of, out of, out of 25? Out of what? Uh, the, yeah, the 24 plus. Overall. It doesn't seem like, you know, it seems like it's more than that. Because, you know, if you have the residential area four, around that building we have parking, we have very... 
I'm sorry, I, I thought you were talking specifically to the central zone no. right there. No, I, I know that you are not, uh, uh, we are not talking the same thing, because I'm an engineer myself, so I go, you know, I have some idea about, you know, what should be the, what percentage and so on. So I like to know that, because it seems like quite a bit of space is like black pitch parking sp space, which, which definitely we don't want to see anymore in Troy. And that's what we have in the, uh, in the north, uh, in the east and north corner, you know, the big building that we, office building we have, it's a huge parking spot. It's, it's useless. It's, it's, so we want to make sure that we, we, we reduce that. Um, yeah, I think that's basically would be one thing. And the other thing is, we're talking about the green space, uh, the, the wetland that we have, um, that's really, I don't know, if, is it wetland means that's unusable, right? It's not floodplain, it's wetland. So that's not recreational space, really. It's not what? Recreational space. No, no we are totally creating areas around it. Yeah, I know. Right. So that's why, you know, we, we have to make sure that we create recreational space that's functional, that a group of people can go gather. Somebody pay, can play guitar. It's not me. <laughs> Last time. That's, that's First time we said that I'm going to play guitar there, but somebody can play guitar, you know, and then people can listen to it. So it's a happening place. That's what we wanted to. All of us, it seems like, like to see that. But with, with this kind of layout, layout uh, it seems like I know that big parking spot, um, maybe it's not possible. So it seems like, you know, I, if I understand the, uh, Mr. Carlisle's presentation, the concept space kind of solidifies everything about the layout and how the building's going to be. I, I may have misunderstood that we can go back and we can check with him. But I like to see the layouts change and its functionality is defined at the concept phase. That's basically would be my input. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Ms. Paracas. Yeah, I just want to clarify a little bit to what I said. Um, you know, the reason I gave those images of the parking garage isn't because I was worried that you were going to put a block that was uninteresting. It was because you had told me that no one would go for moving the parking garage into the center. And I was trying to make the point that, yes, you can move the parking garage into the center because you can make it a beautiful building. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that you also didn't get my point after I showed you all the images of the pedestrian boulevard because you talked about how those white sidewalks through the parking lot are, are connecting pedestrians. That's not what I'm talking about. That, that does not create a destination. It's, nobody wants to walk through a parking lot and, and, and have bocce ball next to a parking lot. Um, so I just want to make sure you really understand what I mean. And, and you know, to your point where you talked about this is still early and we can still do all that and you have no problem with what I'm saying, that's fine, but that stuff needs to be in this concept plan. No, you don't have to show me the exact images of, of where the seating and what type of benches you're going to put. But you have to have it zoned off and not have parking spots there and say, this is all going to be a pedestrian boulevard. We're not going to move a building into this area because we're going to have um, all these other spaces, retail spaces, restaurants. So two restaurants that stand alone like that in a parking lot is not an attraction for people to come and stay. I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that, that they be connected and it be a strip, opposite a strip where the parking garage is, hence creating that walkable boulevard. And then you can have your water feature, you can have everything else. The residential building sounds amazing. I have no issue with any of the buildings. The hotel sounds fine, the, the office building, everything sounds fine. It's the central concept, but this is the concept plan phase. And so it does have to be presented to us before we can move on. Okay, any more questions? I just have one question. I, I know, I believe, the smart bus goes up and down Crooks Road. Have you looked at the possibility of putting some kind of a, maybe a central point on the, I'll call it a campus for lack of a better word, where the smart bus could drop people off and then get back onto Crooks Road? Uh, we haven't specifically. Okay. We can I know that might be too far in the future, but I'm just thinking that might be one of those central focus points where you have like commuter buses drop people off or, you know, have. Uber or Lyft pickup spot, something that would give a focus to the site, so. Yes, Ms. Mawawala. One last question. Um, you mentioned that there is sizable interest in the residential, and that is quite possibly the first area you're going to be developing. Do you have any interest in the office professional building area, too, or have you? Yes, we've, started, we've started to talk to various office headquarter users. Um, they're intrigued by the plan. 
they, I wouldn't say that we're further along. I mean, COVID is still out there, we're, but there are plenty of folks who are um, looking to downsize even from 500,000 to 300,000. So all of that sort of, I think those conversations will come once we know what we can do. We've, um, we've had initial conversations, but really until we have an approved concept plan, nobody thinks they could come here because it wouldn't support what we're looking to, you know, to, to image out. Understood, yeah. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Seven. Reminder, this is a public hearing. Yep, After, as soon as the applicant sits down, we're gonna be opening that up, so. Any more questions for the applicant? All right, seeing none, Mr. we- Mr. Chairman? Oh, yes. Just a follow-up question on the, uh, on the office building. I was just curious, and I know you're early in the process, but given all the COVID, other recent developments, more people working from home as opposed to in the office, is, is that building gonna be, or contemplated to be configured differently than a traditional office building? Well, we would never build it speculatively. Understood. So I think it would be in collaboration with that company. <clears throat> but I can tell you this, <clears throat> The most successful building in our entire portfolio is the top of Troy building, PNC Center. Why? Because it is highly amenitized. <clears throat> and I would, would envision that a headquarter user, in addition to the amenities on the site, will also have a highly amenitized building. Um, that is what's bringing people back into the office space, frankly. They want to have that sort of, of feel, and that's what we're experiencing. <clears throat> and that's why the PNC Center is so successful. It's because it's so highly amenitized with fitness and multiple uh, opportunities for food and a golf simulator and an active courtyard and <clears throat> um, cleaners in the building and a travel agency. I mean, conferencing, you know, all of the above are, are there, and, and that's what folks are looking for. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we will open the public hearing for anyone that would like to uh, address the commission on the proposed development. Uh, when you come up, uh, make sure you sign in on the sheet with your name and address. Anyone want to speak to the commission on this plan? Oh, come on up. You don't have to raise your hand, you can just come right up, so. We're not as formal as a classroom at school, so. <laughs> And yep, name and address is all. Okay, um, and my name is Lori Shaw, and I think I just need to give my name correct? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. I am so glad I attended tonight. Um, I got really excited to hear Ms. Paracas and Ms. Malahani, Malahali, pardon me, and many other, Table, Raman, all of the wonderful comments. Um, I, it's, oh, I live about a thousand feet. I live right across from Flagstar Bank, and I've lived there for 25 years. Um, a lot longer than I thought I would. I thought I'd, but I have been there that long. Um, so I've seen a lot of Troy, and I grew up in Troy actually. Um, so this is the last wooded, 80% wooded parcel left. I can't tell you what that means to a resident. It's so important for responsible design innovation at this point in Troy. And it's exciting to think about what the possibilities are. Now, um, I I'm, I'm happy that some, somebody wants to be innovative. I want that. I'm, I know I'm supposed to talk to the company. I want that. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking like sides of building with plants on them. You know, like parking structure can be full of plants. And some cities, 
and internationally you see high rise plant. So well, hold on a minute, let me just back up and I don't know if I have a time limit here. Because I, okay, thank you. There's just a lot that I want to try to get out. So because I also have a small business and I travel a lot in my car, when I go by there and I see the native grasses and the lush dark green, 24 acres, it looks really lush and green. I know scientifically it's proven that my blood pressure lowers. Just seeing that. I see the blue skies when I'm coming westbound on Long Lake. I see the treetops and that alone is so important. So I'm thinking, you know, let's, let's go with that for a theme here. You know, I'm thinking, and I like the idea of keeping the, oh, I know we have to because the eagle, the two wetlands. And then you also, the builder also talked about keeping native plants around there. And then um, I'm thinking like, what about a botanical garden? You know, that we can cover for in the winter. Um, uh, you can even you can grow vegetables. You can donate the vegetables to a food bank. I mean, the residential area, they could come down there and they'd have somewhere to sit. With, and they, um, there's just a lot I want to say, so please just bear with me. Um, now, with I-75 and all the traffic on Long Lake and Crooks, what is the fresh air that this 24 wooded acre is providing. So when we take out eight, um, we keep 20%. So I'm thinking, let's go with the native plant idea. Something very innovative. So um, another thing I was thinking about is I think you mentioned there was a stream that came through area one and then that's why Eagle, and it, then it, and then it um, goes through to the right side and, um, uh, well, it goes into the sewer system. So that's why Eagle has to incorporate. So why don't we capitalize on a bubbling brook and have someone, you know, have different seating areas there with lush vegetation. Um, I've seen people walk their dogs along the side and um, enjoy, like, the shade that the greenery gives. Um, so I guess I, I guess I want something very innovative and I'm just very excited to hear the council want that too. And um, let's see. And then, let's see. Um, um, oh, um, I did submit a written um, proposal. And I did say the minimum of six um, levels, but I really want the minimum um, and not six. I meant to put four for area one and then the minimum for area three and four, uh, two and three. Um, and because I feel like it would be very oppressive now, but I really, I think the innovation is the most important to me. And the idea of concerts and like beautiful lush green and the, because the air is, is, is pretty, um, there's a lot of exhaust CO2 from the expressway, from the streets that if we, the more green we put in there, the more the air will be fresh. So, and then, um, oh, and let's not put a fountain in. Um, you know, let's work with like, like a waterfall or something around rocks and something peaceful and serene because the area is really loud. I mean, I can hear I-75 very clearly from a thousand feet west. So these guys are gonna be even pushed over more. So we need something that stops the noise. Um, and I, I, mean, I was even thinking like, tu, you know, Tulum, uh, Tulum, Mexico, there's an a, a innovative developer there, Roth. And I know that climate is completely different than Michigan. Um, but he's actually working in, working within, um, work designing out from 
not removing one tree and designing out and using organic things. So, I mean, I'm not saying that that would be appropriate, but I mean, something like that. And, um, well, I'm just excited to hear that we, we're gonna move into another innovative, or we're gonna move toward more of an innovative um, use. And um, thank you very much for listening today. Take thank care. Thank you. Right. Anyone else from the public that would like to address the commission? Yes, come on up, sir. Be sure to put your name down and your address. Uh, yep, is there a pen? Oh, wait, hold on. Uh. Oh, all right. I'm showing up. Uh, my name is Waikow. I live about a mile up and to the right, and to the east. Um, uh, first of all, I do concur with uh, everyone in the planning commission. I agree that as a nice, you know, pedestrian sort of centric uh, promenade or something, I just did some traveling and you know going to like like a mid-rise Chicago or like Boulder, Colorado. Like I really would like to see that happen here, especially with a you know brand new plot of land. Um, uh, I just wanted to hide a few things. Um, I guess one point is, as far as any transit options go, I know there's like, I think there's a bus line that already goes up there. I was wondering if there's any, uh, well, I'm not sure if it would be at this stage that you would put in the, the integration of that sort of transit option there. Um, two, um, just as like a resident, I kind of, I feel like a pedestrian sort of, what do you call it, a mall almost, with like, sort of facilitate things like, I kind of want to see more community sort of centric things like an art gallery or um, smaller areas around here that I could just bike to from home instead of having to go through like, drive out five miles to Rochester or all the way down to Royal Oak. I live right here and this seems like the perfect opportunity for that. So I guess thanking all y'all for your uh, input on that. Um, I wanted to, I guess I agree with the park and comments that you mentioned. Um, exact thoughts that I had, basically. So, um, yeah, I guess my, all in all, I agree with what your guys' input is. Um, and as a resident of right around there, I really hope to see it uh, become something that I like. So, yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Anyone else from the public that would like to address the commission? Seeing none, they close the public hearing. Bring that back to the commission, Mr. Seven. Oh, I'm sure what you're gonna tell me is each of the commissioners has received emails, copies of emails. I think we get around like 10 to 15 or so. Uh, most of them raise concerns about the destruction of green space, some concerns about the height of the buildings. I think that pretty much encapsulates what was sent to us. So thank you for reminding me with raising your hand, Mr. Seven. Mr. Hudson. Three things I'd like to see in this concept agreement, if it's recommended tonight. First, I'd like to have the height of those three buildings reduced to eight stories maximum. Secondly, on the phasing, I'd like to have a provision in there that before a second or third or fourth phase is commenced, the first phase is completed. I don't want to see, and I've seen these uh, in Troy before, where a PUD gets going and it's sporadically developed and it's an eyesore and a problem for any further developer. Lastly, I'd like the concept agreement reduced, I think, or amended as far as the special permitted uses go. Mr. Antone told us that what you see and what he has disclosed are going to be the uses. The agreement is a wide open west under the terms of the ordinance if it's adopted to permit automotive repair in some of these areas. As by way of an example, I think Mr. Carlisle showed us there was a list, I think, in one of the ordinances about 26 different areas of activity. I want to block that. I want to say what the agreement is going to say is what's been represented to us, and I don't think we need this all-inclusive language 
I'm a lawyer, and I know you put in more than you'll ever think you're going to use, but I want it limited. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone like to offer a well, resolution? A footnote. Oh, sure, go ahead. I'm not as eloquent as Ms. Baracus, but I want to tell you, she could have been speaking for me every word. I agree with her. Any resolutions anyone would like to offer? Yes. I mean, Ms. I just Baracus. have a question. Um, I personally would resolve not to recommend this to City Council, but I, I don't know if this is something we want to postpone and offer them an opportunity to come back. If we turn it down, are they not allowed to come back? How does that work exactly? Ms. Dufresne, you want to answer that? Yeah, sure. So the way the ordinance reads is this is a recommending body, so they would still have the opportunity to go through to the Council, even with a negative, a negative recommendation. Would we also have the opportunity to postpone action on? Is that within our purview? I think you, I think you can. Um, I am reading the ordinance right now, and it does say that um, once the pl concept plan is uh, submitted, planning commission shall make a recommendation. But I think it's reasonable um, if you're one 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 postponement was one postponement. But at some point, you have to make you shall make a recommendation. This board shall make a recommendation positive or negative to cancel. Right. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Beekner. For what it's worth, you guys obviously know what you're doing. I think that you made that very clear. I think you get where we're coming from. We're speaking for the community. We live in the community. This is going to be special. I don't think you're quite there right now, but I, I'm super confident that you guys are going to get us there. That's my opinion. Any resolutions anyone wishes to make? Personally, based upon the input, I think we should postpone action on this to give the opportunity for the applicant to take into consideration the comments that have been made tonight. Uh, I know, I think there's a lot of promise with this, and I think as my colleagues have mentioned, we want to make sure this is done right. Uh, I think there's some disconnection because of the fact that, you know, we understand that you have areas here that you want to put certain features in, and I don't think there's major opposition to what you're trying to do overall on the site, but I think there's concerns about how does a site fit together as a whole. And, uh, you know, personally, I think as chair, I could, am able to offer a motion to postpone action on this. Uh, do I need to make it specific, or can I just make a general motion to postpone action on it? I think the resolution should be more, give, I mean, we've had a lot of discussion about what the direction is, but I think you should try to encompass in your resolution what specific you want the, be specific with what you want the applicant to, to look at. Okay. Well, he's been give, they've been given a lot of direction, yeah. but let's make the resolution be specific. All right. Well, I would move that we postpone action on this uh, to give the uh, applicant an opportunity to consider the input from the uh, commissioners on the, the um, overall concept plan and to give us a kind of a feel for what the entire project is going to look like. I don't know if that's what we would like to have in our resolution. I would second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to postpone action. Uh, is that resolution uh, okay with you, uh, Ms. Dufresne? That's fine. Okay. Yes. All right. I want to make sure our lawyer is fine with that. Is there any... Normally, you don't have a discussion on a postponement motion, but uh, I'll give the opportunity for the commission to give input on that. Any, any comments? Well, I, I'm not sure. Did we want to add some of specific language with things that when it comes back, we want to see in there? You can go ahead and add those in. I will accept those. Um, I, I mean, I'd really like to see the pedestrian boulevard concept displayed at the concept plan level. Can you be specific? Where I'm suggesting that you put the parking structure in the center, area three, and that along Long Lake, it be buildings connected to create a boulevard. And it can even be L-shaped if you want that amenity area to be incorporated, or that can be where you put the art sculptures and whatever. But the idea would be that there's no access off of Long Lake because there'd be buildings across and there would be no driving 
between Area 3 and the buildings along Long Lake. That would all be pedestrian only area. So people would enter from Corporate Drive or Crooks, they would park, and then they would access the boulevard by foot. But their restaurants need parking, is what they're going to say, and I agree with them. But, but, but I'm not envisioning two anchor restaurants like they are. I don't want a Red Robin and a whatever. I, I'm looking for a, I, I showed all these pictures, I hope they got the, the idea, but you know, you talked about the, the, the the building, the PNC building, and how it had so many amenities, and that's why it's so, sex so successful. So think of it this way. That promenade or boulevard, whatever you want to call it, can provide all of those amenities. It can be your dry cleaners, your, your gym, your ice cream shop, your cafe. All of those amenities can be part of this boulevard that your residents will use, that your office you know, the workers will use that, that work in the office buildings, but also that Trey residents can come and, and use as well. So that's what I'd like to see. I don't know, you know, I, I'm putting it in the resolution because that's what I want to see, but that's really what I believe the master plan envisioned for this area. It does make it different, and I think it does need to be unique, and it needs to be a destination, and two restaurants with parking lot. Like I said, I don't have any issue with anything else. It's, 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 it's that central part. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I think we also have to keep in mind that we have to account for traffic. We have to account for this size of a development and to have two points of ingress and egress will be a nightmare for the consultants to look at and say to you guys, we can recommend this. I mean, we have to be practical about what we're talking about here. I see what you're saying about the one building, but what you're basically saying is it would be a strip center. And that's exactly what we don't want, is a strip center. So I, I, I just think some of these things sound great in concept, but I'm very nervous about where we're going here. I think I got to mention one. So are we. There's this parking deck in the middle concept, every parking deck you showed was beautifully designed with ground floor retail, there is a 0% chance that retail succeeds in the middle of that site with zero visibility from Long Lake or Crooks. It just, it's retail 101. You cannot have a parking deck with ground floor retail in the middle of the site, surrounded by buildings, parks, all these other, and there's no visibility. Nobody knows it's there unless you're one of the 150 or so residents that live there, and that's not gonna support it. So the parking deck should be beautifully designed. I am currently building a beautiful parking deck in Corktown that doesn't look like a parking deck, that does have retail on the corner. But if it was hidden and nobody could see it, we would never fill the retail. So you can have a beautiful parking deck and you can have ground floor retail. I just don't know that you can hide it. I mean, the the... The version that you have does say office slash residential slash retail for that center building already. So you're already contemplating it there. It's not going to be ground floor retail in area three. That's either going to be an office building or that's going to be a residential building. One of the two. It's, 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 correct. it's meant to be, the area three is always meant to be what the market wants for this overall development. It could, like we said, it could be phase two of the residential. It could be if office picks back up and could be phase two of, of an office building. It, it could have some components of that, but it, it was, it's meant to be kind of the, the, the phase that is, is most successful that we need more of, I guess is the way I should say it. And I want to make sure that we set the right expectation. We want to improve upon this plan and use some of your ideas without question, but we also want to be realistic in what we can't do. And as Tony mentioned, I don't even know if the Troy traffic consultants would allow what you're suggesting with zero ingress, egress on Long Lake. This is a large development and having zero ingress, ingress on Long Lake, we may not be able to agree to that because we're not allowed to. So I want to set a proper expectation. There are things we can do to create more walkability. We can showcase what we're doing in a, in a we can have prettier pictures to show what we're doing. We can listen to some of the things you're doing. But some of the suggestions either aren't going to work practically with your traffic consultant or 
like I said, you can't hide retail and expect retailers to succeed. Okay, let's, let me let me go down first, uh, Mr. Faison. Uh, go ahead and ask your question. Or your uh, so, Ms. Parak, is glad you were very specific when you made those last comments, which are consistent with what you said earlier in, in the previous meeting. Um, it, the, the point I was going to make is I think that's a little bit different than some of the other comments about it being a gateway, being an, an attraction uh, to, to residents and not just, the, not just the people that are in the offices or, or, or the uh, apartments on the site. So I, I, I think there should be some specific specificity in the resolution about we want that type of development and that type of attraction and those type of amenities, but I don't think we need to, to design them, right, to the developer's point. Okay, Mr. Beekner, I think you Obviously, you guys are good at this, but I'm just giving you two cents again. That area three, and you got the amenity 1A, B, 2A, and B, and then three. Is there a way to connect them to some degree and have that all walkable, which would connect everything and have reason for people to come there, reason for the for the area one to go to area four, reason for the wetlands to be part. I don't know how you do that, but I, that ability for pathways, that ability for all of your customers, um, have, have, and, and still, I think you're heading in the right direction. I think you could connect those. It doesn't need to be all the way around area three just as a rectangle, but maybe it zigs and zags a little bit a couple ways. But that would be kind of, I live a mile away. I'd, I'd drive there for that and walk with my with my babies and um, I, I, I think you're heading in the right direction. All right, uh, let's see, Mr. Hudson. <laughs> I want to bring us back to the point of the uh, proposed resolution which has been seconded and that is without specificity. Our applicants heard us. He's had very specific discussions. I don't want to get the resolution bound up in some point that really is irrelevant. So it's general move to postpone, I think, is proper. Yeah. Okay. I agree. I so, agree. Mm. Yeah. All right. So yeah. unless somebody has something specific about the motion to postpone. Okay. Uh, They've heard what we've said. Yes. I think Kathy's documented yep. it. Yep. I think. Is that enough? Yes. <laughs> it's enough for us. We okay. Take All right. Notes. Good. I think Great. That we know what to do. Okay. Good. All right. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just one question. Mr. Hudson made a point about the PUD agreement and, you know, how it's broad and all the uses that are possible, but the applicant said they're not going to avail themselves of those uses. Does that need to be amended for the next iteration? Let me ask our city attorney. Yes, that's something that, that I have emailed Mr. Tennant about. I will work on proposing some language for Mr. Tennant to review in terms of tightening up that language based on our conversation and based on what's been represented by um, Mr. Anton. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Frame. Okay, with that, I guess we're ready now for the roll call on the motion to postpone. Mr. Krent. Yes. Mr. Lambert. Yes. Ms. Malala Holly. Yes. Ms. Paracas. Yeah. Mr. Rahman. Yes. Mr. Tagle. Yes. Mr. Beekner. Yes. Mr. Faison. Yes. Mr. Hudson. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. And we will look forward to the next presentation you have for us. And I'm sure that our city staff was able to sit down with you and probably provide you specific input on what we've been telling you. So I don't want to put words in his mouth. But Thank you all yeah. very much. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Ms. Paracas? I did just want to say one last thing about the traffic that you brought up and, and why it might not even be possible. We haven't even talked about the traffic of this one because I think it's so premature at this point because I think the concept, we just haven't hit it yet. But um, the traffic already has major problems where major changes are going to be needed around the area. So I don't want that to be the reason that you don't seriously consider the pedestrian concept because right now it shows traffic F, which is um, unacceptable levels of traffic and requires changes in the roads. So that, that's coming anyway. So I just want to make it clear now. So when it comes back, that's not the reason given to me why you didn't do the uh, pedestrian concept. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. 
Next on the agenda are public comments for items on the agenda. Anyone wish to speak to the commission on items on the agenda? Seeing none, we will move on to planning commission comment. I'm gonna start with Mr. Carlisle because he has an important announcement to share with us. I'm not sure how important it is, but um, <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't wanna over promise and under deliver here. Um, so, um, on Friday, I, I, I wrote a memo and, and sent it over, and, it, and unfortunately didn't have time to get into your packet, but I did want to bring it up tonight. Um, Director Sauna and I, including city management, Mr. Miller, have been, have been racking our brain on the issue of census and census data as part of the 22 um, master plan. Um, to date, the 2020 census data has only been released for redistricting purposes. Um, it's very incomplete data as it relates to what we need in our functions. Um, in uh, going on the census website and um, for the research, it looks like the next release of full data will not be until May of 2023. No guarantee that that's gonna be even the data hits because it keeps moving back. Um, so we have a decision time to make. Uh, obviously, the delay in releasing the census data is stalling the adoption of the master plan. Uh, we spent a lot of time formating policy changes, et cetera, but we can't implement them and make changes in the zoning ordinance incorporating to, to, to codify them until we have the master plan adopted. Um, while obviously census data is extremely important towards the foundation of a master plan, um, it's likely that if we waited until the 2023 data was released, we're a year away right now from adoption probably if we wait that long. Um, we, in consultation, um, think that um, the full release of census data really probably won't severely impact the policy this changes that we are talking about as part of the master plan, especially with the neighborhood nodes. I think we have a good sense and feel. Um, there is other data that we can use. There's SEMCOD data, there's five-year data, there's other data that we can incorporate um, into kind of to fill that into the master plan at this point. But again, if we wait till the full release of the, of the census data, we're looking again a year towards adoption. So what we are suggesting or recommending is that we continue going down the process of finalizing the draft and going through the adoption process. And then when the census data is released of next year, we would then add an addendum to the master plan that is a community profile. And based on that community profile, if there's significant changes in data and information, we would go back and reflect that in the master plan that was adopted, hopefully, this year. Um, we think that would be the best way to move forward, uh, and that would not delay, significantly delay the adoption of the master plan. And again, we can make changes once that community profile is drafted in 2023. So that's our recommendation, but before we get too far along, I wanted to get feedback from the Planning Commission, and then, I know, Director Sadov, if you have anything to add to that. No, it was, it was well stated. Good for me. Yes. Anybody object to that uh, proposed course of action? Yes, Mr. Faison. I don't object. Okay. I, I, I just had a question. So I, it, I get moving forward, given the time we've spent already and, and waiting in, in the time to complete it if we wait for the census data. But did you say that based on the community profile, when it comes out, no, then we, we might adjust the master no, plan, that we would well, adjust amend it? In theory. So um, what we would do as an addendum to this 20, called 2022 plan, um, is we would create a, community, a full community profile. And so we talk about population, housing, all that sort of stuff. If in our analysis, and again, the plan commission will be part of that process of developing the community profile. If in our analysis of that community profile, we think there are significant enough changes in the profile of the community that warrants going back to the master plan and amending it based on those changes, we would do it at that time. So there may be a round of an amendment in a year or two based on that community profile, but right now it's, it's premature to anticipate what that would be because we don't have the census data, but I don't think it would be serve the city well right now to wait another year on that if chance there's a significant change in the information we get from the census that would change some of our policy recommendations, if that makes sense. So I, I, think, I think we feel as from, City, from professional recommendation, from the city administration, moving forward now with the potential, though small, most likely, because we still have some data to, to look at, 
that we would have to make some changes to the master plan once the new census data comes out in the future. I, I hope that clarified your question. It does, it does. So there's a chance we would have to make an adjustment, but it's, I, I get it. And I agree with the approach. Okay, okay. great. Yeah. I have a good question, no. you know, and I agree with that, but I'm just wondering, you know, what parameters do you have in the community profile? Is it like a... So there's a list in here uh, on the memo of actually things that we would look at um, as part of the community profile. Um, again, it's subject to change based on planning commission input, city input, as we go through the process of, of gathering it, uh, that, that data. But typically it includes the issues of population, housing, community facilities, natural features, land use, transportation, yeah. business and market demographics, and what policy implications are, are a result of those. Okay, yeah, so I think our focus in this phase of our master plan update is more on the nodes and stuff, so I don't think those community profile probably would affect that much, you know, so I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Great, thank you. Uh, commission comment, Mr. Savinant. Ms. Dufresne. No, thank you. Mr. Cagle, Mr. Rahman. I'm good. Ms. Paracas. No, thank you. Trent. Ms. No, Faison. Mr. Hudson. Ms. Malalaha. The, the conference mid-October, should we talk now or should we talk in smaller groups about details? I saw hotels been booked and the tickets have been booked. We can t we'll, we'll talk in smaller groups. Smaller groups. Thank you. Without a quorum, though, so. Right. <laughs> Without, That's part of my question. Well, that is always the case. But for the explicit purpose of talking about arrangements yes. for the not Michigan not Association of Planning not, National not, or, uh, Annual Conference. Not public business, but. <laughs> All right. Ms. Arnecki, we are adjourned then. Adjourned.